And thank you for the invitation. It's always nice to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm here to speak about one of the children of ATV. I have been looking closely into to the story of the industrial PhD program, which was created by ATV, uh, in order to find a critical angle. Because when you are celebrating, there must be someone who are telling the truth, and not only all the, the good stuff. But actually, it has been very difficult to find a lot of critical angles uh, on this baby called the industrial PhD program. It is, I would say, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, program, uh, R&D uh, program in Europe, with the focus on R&D and innovation activities in companies. When it was created, it was created with the focus on promoting education, PhD education, research in companies, and innovation. So that was in 1971. So the idea about combining education, research, and innovation is not new. The uh, knowledge triangle were already foreseen by ATV, and I would say that is uh, a good story uh, to tell. Uh, of course, I have been looking into whether I could find some critical angles, and I will come back to that, uh, because we can still do it better. Uh, but uh, since uh, we also want to celebrate uh, this child, which is uh, now 41 years old, I mostly have good stories about it. Well, I don't want to go into a deep description of this scheme. Some of you are familiar uh, with it. Uh, it's about educating PhD students in companies with state aid and uh, with the network between universities and companies in order to uh, promote research in all scientific areas. That has been a challenge. Uh, Ten years ago, it was not in all scientific areas, but we have done a lot during the, the, the last ten years in order uh, to promote uh, this uh, scheme in, in all scientific areas, also in humanities and social science. And uh, from zero uh, number, a zero percent number uh, of uh, projects in the humanities and uh, social science, we now have 25 percent of all projects in humanities and social science. It is regarded and I think it was also thought as an entrance to a career, a research career in the business sector. Uh, when we look at the ordinary students, PhD students, 80% of those PhD students stay in the public sector and only 20% go in the uh, private sector. But if we look at PhD students, when they're finished, 85% stay in the private sector and 15% uh, go into the public sector. So I think this is a, a good example of a, uh, a scheme which uh, uh, have a focus on the business as well as education and, and research. And also it's a success if the aim is to have more uh, students and research uh, in the private sector. Today, I don't know what the amount of support was uh, 41 years ago. I think an uh, ordinary salary uh, 41 years ago was about 5,000 crowns a month for an uh, uh, average worker. Uh, and uh, now we have that uh, PhD student get uh, approximately 30,000 uh, crowns. That is uh, 4,000 uh, euros. And we give up to 50% uh, of subsidy uh, for the salary. So it's uh, uh, the same for small and, and large companies, but we have participation in this program, 50% uh, of all projects are in small uh, companies. So that's a lot, uh, and we think that's a success. We have discussed, uh, together with the Danish Council for Technology and Innovation, how we could increase the number of small companies uh, hiring a PhD student. Uh, and uh, we have also tried to develop several models during the crisis. We saw a sharp reduction in the number of applications. But now uh, we are back on track, and uh, it seems to be a very attractive scheme for students as well as enterprises. It is actually the Danish Council for Technology Innovation who is responsible uh, for the industrial PhD program today. 
uh, but uh, they have handed over the administration of this program to a committee who are deciding uh, who should have a, 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 who can be approved uh, and who cannot be approved, and then the uh, uh, the ministry uh, takes care of all the administration. Another success story is that this is probably the uh, the scheme, the innovation or research scheme in Europe with a minimum amount of administration. When you put in an application and it is approved, uh, then the student and the company get a letter and also the university saying that we don't want to hear from you the next three years unless you deviate from your plans. This was introduced last year, so we have skipped all reports from the university and uh, the company. The only success criteria is that they will get their PhD. Uh, and if they don't, we will ask them questions about why not and uh, uh, discuss whether the company should pay back the money. But so far, we have a very high uh, rate of uh, success. Uh, and uh, there's no reason why we should not have this model uh, because the, the company has an interest to have research, uh, the student has an interest uh, to have an education, and the university has an interest to educate people. Uh, so we cannot see why we should have a lot of reports uh, to my office. Uh, I think uh, uh, we got, when I entered the ministry, we got approximately 1,000 reports a year uh, from uh, PhD students, and I have never looked into one single of them. And, the, and last year, all of them, they uh, went away with the flood in, uh, in the city of Copenhagen. Uh, so, <laughs> so we decided, why, why uh, should we look into this? Uh, it will, it's just paper, and we don't need it. And uh, two weeks ago, we also decided that we didn't want to have any uh, uh, signature from an uh, official auditor about the spending of money in companies because uh, it, it was a too little uh, amount of money and it only created uh, bureaucracy uh, in uh, the, the companies, so we decided to skip all that. And also some of this has been skipped for universities. So I would say it's not only the oldest uh, scheme in Europe, it's also the scheme with a minimum or almost no administration because we expect that the incentive to get an education and to do a good job will do all uh, the, the impact. And so we do not need to control people. Of course, we have some single problems uh, in this, the culture in companies. They cannot understand each other. So uh, sometimes we get telephone calls from the PhD students who are saying that the companies want them to, to do uh, work which they are not supposed to do because when they, you get a PhD, uh, industrial PhD grant, you are not allowed to work uh, uh, in the company. You should work 100% uh, with your project. But of course, the project would fit into the business uh, uh, plans of the, of the companies, else they wouldn't have this uh, project. And half of the time, the PhD student they work at the university. So, and sometimes the companies does not understand this, so uh, we have to, to, to uh, have a dialogue with companies uh, and with the PhD students, so they're back on track. And I think only in one case out of uh, 1,000 PhD uh, projects we have in initiated during the last 10 years, we have had uh, severe problems. So I would say that is 0.1% uh, 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 and that is not much. So I think that's a success. Uh, in this case, uh, I think they speak German, uh, but they could be all type of languages. 12% of all new PhD, industrial PhD students, they are uh, from abroad. Uh, I would say this is also a bad story because for ordinary stu uh, PhD students, it's 21%. So we need to increase the number of foreign PhD students with an industrial PhD. We have tried that uh, with the special uh, China scheme, where we allocated special money for Chinese PhD students to, to get a PhD in Denmark in a Danish company, uh, but we couldn't get rid of the money. Nobody we were, had very few, few applications. So that was also uh, a bad story. But uh, 
focus on these bad stories because else it would be too much celebration. Uh, well, before I go to a good story, I would say uh, I have been asked to talk about the future. Well, I'm very concerned about the future uh, because I think we have too few applications from companies for this scheme. We have doubled the number of uh, PhD, uh, industrial PhD during the last five years. Uh, and I would love to double the number again from 120 uh, or 30 to 250. But I think it's a pity that we have only approximately 200 applic applications a year. And it's a shame that 40% uh, of these applications, they cannot be approved uh, because uh, they have not the quality we would like to have. And here I see uh, the, where do we have people from universities? Why do we send the applications and sign them if they are not good enough uh, for the industrial peace students, uh, for the industrial PhD program? Uh, because we see, I think, a lot of uh, applications which does not uh, comply with the uh, quality criteria. And that is actually a, a thing we are very uh, keen about because we don't want to have a discussion that an industrial PhD has not a good PhD compared to an ordinary PhD. Because we have seen this discussion in other countries. Uh, this uh, program has been such a success, so it has been copied in many countries. I think that 15 countries around Europe now who are having this program and also the European Union. Uh, but in some countries, especially in Germany, they are against this program because they say it's uh, uh, the, the industrial PhD students, they are not good enough. It's an uh, uh, easy way to get a career and to get a, a, a doctor degree. But well, you know about the discussion in Germany. Uh, they all have, uh, 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 well, copied the uh, PhD. So maybe there's a special German, uh, German um, uh, angle uh, on this. Uh, we don't see that in Denmark. And uh, the quality of uh, industrial PhD is as high as an ordinary PhD. And I think this is due uh, to very good companies with a high uh, degree of, of R&D activities and also close collaboration with universities and, and enterprises. But this could be better. And we could, I would like to see more applications. Well, we have the best, uh, most well-documented R&D scheme in the world. The industrial PhD scheme is simply the only scheme where we can document almost everything uh, it, we have the uh, register of data from the beginning, and we cannot find any other country in the world where there's a register the data from, uh, from the beginning of this program. We can also trace in the Danish national statistics uh, researchers from their birth to their death, and we know where they have been working, so we can see all the type of mobility uh, between the public and private sector and different companies. We also know about their salaries in the, in the companies, we know everything because we have a very uh, excellent tax system who uh, report everything to us. <laughs> and this means that we can actually see what are the main uh, impact for individuals of this program. And uh, it turns out that there are uh, uh, positive uh, impacts for each and every one. If we take uh, an average uh, or uh, industrial PhD student, uh, then we can always find another person in Denmark who are almost a twin to this uh, person with the same education, with the same age, with the same number of children, uh, living from the same city, uh, and so on. And then we can compare, uh, compare uh, uh, 500 uh, industrial PhDs with their twins in the system and see if they have uh, doing better or worse. And this has produced excellent uh, uh, research. Uh, good research in, in international journals, but also it has proven that industrial PhDs, they're doing it much better than uh, ordinary PhDs and also uh, than uh, uh, people without a PhD. But also we can see that companies benefit from this. Just to give you uh, uh, four uh, uh, quick shots, we can see that the gross profits in companies, uh, they are much higher in the companies with industrial PhDs than in companies without industrial PhDs. And we can also find twin companies who have a PhD and who has not have a PhD. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, excellent research and uh, these 
uh, results come up in international journals uh, next year. We can also verify that the uh, average number of patents in companies with PhD students, industrial PhD students, are double as high as in, in R&D companies without industrial PhDs. So we compare companies which are uh, more or less the same. The only difference being that one company has hired industrial PhDs and the others have not. We can also see total factor productivity. Here we cannot see a difference. So the uh, productivity, average pro productivity in companies are the same. What does that mean if, we, if they have increased gross profits? It must mean that they have a, a, a growth in other inputs. And if we look at the development and employment, we can see that for those companies who hire a PhD, they uh, increase their uh, employment up to six persons for each industrial PhD. So I would say this is a success story, uh, but we could still do it much better. We could get more companies uh, to hire industrial PhDs. Thank you very much for your attention.